but it's already determined by the emotions I'm always going to feel, or the emotions yeah, you have, I'm going to feel. Yeah, you do already. have the choice not to play. But yeah. I mean, it's a nasty choice, how is but my, it is a choice. How is my ever real self going to feel about it? Yeah, it's either like it or not. Well, what do you because think? Because he's, he's already, <laughs> I, I would imagine If you not, agree to do this, then already, surely you should see it through. But he's already determined it. So yeah, but it's you. Really, you exactly. say I already determined it. So that means that everything I'm going to feel, all tra I've already made all of them. But this thing, when you say I, what are you talking about? I'm talking about me, my identity, my experience. Where do you see your, the central part of you is? Within my mind. Where? Is it up here? Yeah. Yeah. See, that's where I see the, the, you know, the disembodiment is. Because I would say the main bit's here. In your solar plexus. And I've learnt that. Is that a chakra thing as well? It's a chakra thing. It's the void between the two adrenaline, adrenaline glands. Mm. So there's the, the endocrine system, the plant within us, testicles, ovaries, we need to borrow soulmates, pancreas, all in the middle so far. Then you've got the two adrenaline glands here. Mm. And then it's the thymus, the thyroid, and then the pineal gland. So they're all central, except the two adrenaline glands. Mm. So there I see that, they're almost like that thyroidal force. Okay. And you see that middle bit. That's, that's where me is for me. And I've learned to be more there mm. and less up here. You know, some things I had to accomplish, I had to shut this up because this was going, this is going to kill you, this is going to kill you. But you were still thinking the entire time. I was not thinking the entire time, but those thoughts would pop in. When does your brain stop working? Yeah, it's, it's a good experience. But when this brain is working, yeah. and this brain knows shit, it knows how to it, what it knows. It knows how to deal with the emotions. But this is if you can get it. results from instinctual. You, and I feel. See, I feel these organs allow us to feel emotions. Now, sometimes the beginning of an, of an emotion is a pain in my foot. Would you say the signal where? Where's where brain. it comes from? Your brain. It's, your but it's a pain in my foot. That your brain you, is telling you is. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I, I guess. <clears throat> so, so you you can get to a point of meditation where you just you know you're not here you're definitely not here mm. you're kind of around here you're just your your presence is just here you, you, you exist just with your senses yeah but you're yeah. more feeling here and then thoughts will pop up and sometimes you're having to suppress those thoughts but one of your senses is knowing where your body is in but relation you've, all, to itself. you've always got to be feeling something to be engaged right you always have to like i, I think the feelings so that what we get from our body are physiological <clears throat> impulses based upon instinctual drives or whatever like the brain affects the body and then the body will have all these signals and then you become consciously aware of that taking place yeah the pituitary well the, 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 the pituitary gland yeah is the governor of everything so yeah if i get a tickle on my foot mm. maybe it has come from the pituitary gland but well your foot sends signals to your brain which is then telling you that yeah i guess yeah i guess i must be yeah, the, yeah yeah it's all connected but anyway because you've got if you're not in the head thinking in the, you've got to be engaged with something and it's mm. sensations yeah your body and brain don't stop working but they work in tangent well, i said together. A beginning of emotion can start with a pain in my foot. I'm just using an example. Yeah. And I let that come in. So rather than go, go away pain, I'm saying come in, right? And then you acknowledge And the closer it gets to my core here, mm. the less sort of sharp it is. But can still be blocked. There can still be blockages. But then, once it gets here, this knows what to do with it. Mm. So I've experienced pain come in, get less painful, but still a bit resistant, but then come in and then boom. But just when you're, say you cut yourself. <laughs> go like an amazing feeling. No, I just want you to acknowledge what I just said. I acknowledge what you just said, That's, but I don't agree with it. No, but it's happened to me. Okay. And I couldn't have just manufactured it. I couldn't have faked where it. Did you, where in your body did you become aware of this taking place? Like I in said, your mind. 
not in my mind, no. Sure I'm aware of this happening in my foot, I'm aware of it travelling up my body. Yeah, because in this, sensations here. I've had to sit still for 10, 15 minutes to yeah. kind of get into a, a, a moment where I'm not just talking. No, but there's a difference between having, like, a vocalised trail of thought where you're actively working through something and then just having your cognitive movements where you're going through the motions of just how your mind is working in that point. But it's still your mind. Like when you become aware of a pain in your foot, you become aware of it travelling up your leg, you become aware of it there. This awareness is in your brain. Yeah. But you're projecting that awareness onto parts of your body. So I, I, I no, but I know, no, because I don't think I am. Because I think that there is a moment when you when you sat still for long enough mm. that you do move out of your head. You are no longer in your head, but you're still able to make sense of where everything is. So not only can your mind exist outside of yourself in a different reality, it can also exist outside yourself in this reality. Yeah, I think yeah, I think that's what these organs give us the ability so to even do. Even in this reality, there's no need for a physical being because you can exist quite happily without it, right? Yeah, yeah. So and that's like ultimate meditation kind of gets you into that level. Yeah. Um, so I've been where I just had the only thing I was aware of in myself was the air at the entrance of my nostrils. Yeah. As I was breathing in. And I've said I said this at I too, you know. Yeah. And and my heart place. You know, that was the only thing that I was aware of. Yeah. But I suppose if I can remember it and stuff, you know, obviously my brain see I see the brain as more of kind of just antennas rather than there being these specific places for Well the brain's definitely. I mean I think there's it. a front, back and middle and and the pineal gland and the pituitary, they're that I see as the most important parts of the brain. And we've got the reptilian part of the brain at the back, haven't we? And, yeah. You know, so... One thing I want to talk more about is your um, idea of soulmates. Yeah? Yeah. Good. Because that's a big part. I like all these pictures on this door. Oh. Is this uh, any of these you when you were younger, or is that like your your son? Oh uh, yeah, one of them is me. The school photo next to uh, my younger brother. Oh yeah. But yeah, the, so the ones are mostly my son. Yeah. As a kid. Because like, yeah, like you. I, I I may have got the wrong impression, but when we were at the Tory together, I kind of kind of felt like that you thought um, soulmates, like there's a mother, father, God, or whatever, yeah. and there's like the body and experience. I I just want to know like how all these things, because like you've got a lot of ideas, yeah, and a lot of like theories and stuff like that. But one thing which I'm interested about is how they all actually fit together to create one idea of reality. Yeah, well, I guess, you know, they are, they are quite connected. Um, Thank you, by the way. So there's this, there were these three, I, I, when I made this video of my existence theory, I said like, there's three qualities that the universe has, and one of them was fractal, mm. and then one of them is, um, what's it called, when two beings... Duality. feed off each other there's the duality which is more related to soulmates because mm. you've got the male and female Sym symbiosis symbiosis yeah where two things come together to form they're one sort thing. of they're sort of helping each other out in a sense there's two different things as part of the same thing like a like homogenized being not the right and left but like more like the parent child i'd say um What's, it for? What's the fucking word? Symbiosis. The symbiosis is where you take two things and you put them together to create one thing. Like if we were to have a symbiotic relationship like, with Like the little fish that will hang on to the big fish and eat Parasites. stuff off it. But they clean it at the same time, so they both benefit. Okay. 
that yeah. that thing. So those three qualities: fractal, dualism, and and that sort of give and take, teaming up, uh, helping each other out. You know, yeah. both win-win. Like those birds that eat the shit from out between the crocodiles' teeth. Yeah. 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 Sort of helps them both out. And uh, you know, we got our micro bacteria. Yeah. Um, that's different beings essentially, aren't they? Biodiverse. But, and that was an interesting point in evolution when the first cell mm. learnt to live within another cell. Yeah. And and things really bloomed after that. But evolution is just naturally applied chemistry, isn't it, really? And that's all life is really, it's just applied chemistry. We're gonna get onto a different subject here. We should yeah. go back to the so soul. It's, it's, it's the soul mates thing. <laughs> so so not only does my body have a have a gender assigned to it. But my soul also has a gender assigned to it. Yeah. That's so why, you, that's, that's why your body is male. Because my spirit <laughs> because, is male. Because you're the male half of your soul. Okay. So, like, what do you? what is your idea of soulmates? Just in a nutshell. Two halves. Like a seed is often in two halves. That's, yeah. I mean, yeah, I would say, like, soulmates wasn't my uh, invention. It was... Something I heard from A. J. Miller and of oh, soulmates has been the idea of soulmates. Yeah, been, yeah. I, I never used to believe in it, but when I look at the relationships that I've had, and um, you know, I'm being told I need to work. Mm. <laughs> I need to work if I want a successful relationship. I've got to put the work in. Well, you've got to you know, put I, effort in, yeah. I can know it shouldn't be like that. Surely it should be the. It depends on how you put <coughs> effort within a relationship. Yeah, but. Exactly, it turned me off. But uh, <laughs> so, so, but so, I think because looking at it, when when I, so when I first heard of soulmates, then, you know, I've got an idea in my head. Oh, who's my soulmate? And um, the first person I thought it was was the girl in that video you mentioned earlier, and that was mainly because she was the most convenient. Which girl in the video? Which video? The, when I was uh, having oh, my Messiah were, complex. Yeah. yeah, that lady was yeah. your soulmate. And she dressed up that day. I think she was trying to disguise herself. She didn't yeah. want to be recognised. <laughs> anyway, good, but we... Uh, she was my first. I was her first. We were First uh, romantic relationship. First sex. sex. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, was, I was nagging her for months. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so that was like... So we stayed friends from young... Childhood. Anyway, so she was kind of the most convenient because I was speaking to her at the time, and so I thought, you know, I had this idea that it's her, mm -hmm. and I feel maybe I had a spirit play a trick on me, that when I thought, oh, it's her, a spirit gave me a little uplift feeling. And made you think. Oh, it made it me right think. Thing, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because I was I was dabbling at that time. I was sort of probably doing what I shouldn't. You mean like magic. Well, just dabbling a bit with thinking I was speaking a bit, a bit of automatic writing and stuff okay. like that. I was just sort of just seeing what if there was anything to it, really. Um, anyway, and then, like, I realised, no, it can't be her because just fucking she does my head. And, <laughs> <laughs> and, um, but you thought she was your soulmate for a long time. I think yeah. even at the Tory you were telling me she's your soulmate. No, 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 no. I, it wasn't a long time. It was probably a couple of weeks. I thought even now, or at least last time... No, the one I'm so now is not her, it's oh, somebody okay. else. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So I've been... The, there's been one that when I... So I probably thought of her like third or fourth. Mm. And um, when I when I thought, I was so... Do you know what I mean? It was... I was so glad. Not because she is like hot, particularly. It was just... The, the feeling I got from it, the mm. the depth, the strength. And that's what's kind of stuck me into thinking it's her all the time. Every time that I waver or whatever, and no, no other girl comes close to touching the depths of the feelings I get yeah. when I think it's her. And that's, you know, why I've been stuck on her the most, but just having to be patient because she's not having a bar of it. And... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's just got to leave her alone. <laughs> she's got to let... As much as possible. Let um, fate be. But, like, what would make any individual um, 
your soulmate or anyone's soulmate. Why would it be like that? Yeah. But again, like, because I, 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 whenever I think of an idea or something like that, which I think is behind reality or whatever, I always have to figure out what's its purpose to itself, or how does it fit the grander idea which I have of the whole concept altogether. Well, let's just say that the male and female is um, a, like a, a manufactured split. Mm. And that, you know, for whatever reason it might have been necessary to... I mean, I like to look at, say, the solar system. There's, there's two types of things in the solar system. There's light emitting and there's light absorbing. So the planets don't emit light. Mm -hmm. They absorb or reflect light. The sun doesn't absorb light. It just, the sun's the just biggest shines light, light, right? Yeah. So you've got those two different things that both are needed to, for life. Take away one, you've got, you couldn't have life. When you say light, I need to know if you just mean visual light or all way No, whatever sun, whatever the sun, everything the sun gives. So you're including heat in this, you're including yeah. UV. Well, yeah. yeah. And gamma ray radiation. Everything the sun gives. X-ray radiation. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Without that, you, you couldn't that have life on ex the planet. But you understand then that light does exist in darkness then. Because what, what we perceive as visual light is the electromagnetic wavelengths that we can see. I'm just trying to make a simple analogy. Yeah. Right? <laughs> don't, don't, but don't... we need to understand what your analogy leads to. What I'm saying is that you've got these two different types of things in the solar system... Light and darkness. Light emitting yeah. and things that don't emit light, but they reflect light and they absorb light. Um, I mean, we'd just say you had no planets in the solar system. So you just talking it would about be boring, visual light wouldn't it? or not? Like, this is what I need to know. To I'm like... just making a simple, a simple as make it as simple as you can. This analogy. We need to. Let's just talk about that. It's light and we're talking about how it looks so this is an actual part of your idea or is it just an is it just, just a, an analogy so it's just okay so what's the <laughs> for, actual for idea? male and female okay so so why would you why would you want to separate the male and female well i, I never wanted to i didn't do it i mean if we had this if we had the if we're using the analogy of the solar system and we put the planets in the sun that wouldn't work would it we wouldn't, wouldn't get life. Effective solar system, we wouldn't be able to have sheep sun. walking around eating grass on yeah. fields. So maybe that's why the set. The so male and female are separated, but and both are needed. So we, you know, our soul gets separated into male and female when we come into this physical world. So my soul. Was it necessarily male before coming out? It's both. Your soul is male and female. But the the male part gets put here and the female part put, gets put here. They get separated. So my soul effectively in this reality exists in two different people right now. Yeah. One is yes. a male and the other one a female somewhere. Yes, yeah. And that is your soulmate. But, so in the spirit realm... So we are the same. I, I, I in the spirit realm, we're the same. Again, people. you've got a, you've got a body, and she's got a body. So we don't exist. But in the, the emotional way. realm, yeah, there you are together. Always cannot be separated. But that's where all spirits are together, right? Yeah, we're all yeah. with our soulmate in our emotional realm. How, how does this connect to your bigger idea? Well, it fits into the realms. But just because something fits in doesn't mean it belongs there. Like, well, I, 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 I could put my shoes Because I'm on. also looking at this, how, you know, mother and father God are the same. They're in the same situation. They are a soul who's how? got male and female aspects. And how? I feel them differently. How powerful is God? Really powerful. Oh, is he omniscient? Omnipotent? Omnipresent? 
No, I suppose not. I'm probably in terms of the Earth he she is. In terms of this this planet. As far as... I don't know. I'm kind of stuck on that one. Because, like... See, this is the big question. And this, this is the, you know, what I'd really like to get you to see my point of view is that if you see God as an as a person effectively yeah. who just had loads more experience been around for a lot longer and has now got kids so does God have a physical being on this world as well is God like a person walking around uh, so I think I think or is it like a male and a female somewhere walking around I think God has some helpers and I think that may be what the little aliens are. So if God had had God had um, done this on Venus, mm. some of those beings were then able to sort of uh, go around, fly around different and planets and spirits here, and just no, just still have a physical presence in the solar system and influence and impact things. Here. Yeah, I think maybe prevent us from nuking the world. So. The children of God are also aliens. No, I'd say we are the children of God. That 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 would be God making life forms for for himself, for herself. For what purpose, though? To to stop us nuking the, the planet and but blowing it God to could bits. do that without the aliens, right? <laughs> um, God, 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 kind of like for me, I feel like God would do things in the most simplest, most succinct ways. I think God can get, God can certainly have an influence in every single individual mm. until they completely cut off. Then, then it would come into dreams and then, then it would come into physical ailments eventually and maybe eventually just hit them with a bus because they're doing damage to themselves, they need to be taken out. How would you fit all your ideas together? I do, I do get a big picture, and that's what I was going for in the beginning. Mm -hmm. Was, you know, say doing a jigsaw puzzle. I wanted to get the corners and the edges. Yeah. To, to get a big picture. Because there's only one truth, right? There is a truth, yeah. And it doesn't matter how many different parts there are to the truth. The truth is still going to be one thing, and all these true things that. It's all going to be connected. Yeah, that's somehow. why I see it as a as a you know a constant dimension along with time. So how would you describe what the constant is and how it can be? Because you, you so there is a so I, so I say you know the, the the one love the source or whatever that designed this sort of framework for 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 existence and growth that once you know that that's why it says you'll be one with love oh this has died those batteries went really good were they? how long is your camera going to be good to record for that's that's plugged into the mains uh -oh. i thought those batteries were good how is the mic on your camera <laughs> it works and i can turn the volume up so that's what we'll do we'll just... yeah sorry what was so what was the last question Oh yeah, no. Just how, how would you actually describe that one constant truth? Yeah, yeah. So how, however, love source designed it is how it is. But isn't love source? And then truth is things that have happened, you know. And what was the person's intentions? But isn't is, isn't isn't the the one source as you call it, or the love source? Yeah. Wouldn't that be the one constant? So how would we describe that without calling it the love source or the one source? Well, how would you want to describe it? It's like you can describe a cake as a cake, or you can describe it by the ingredients it's made of and how it's been prepared. So, like, what's the ingredients and how is this? Love! Didn't I say that? Well, you say you call it the love source. But what do you think love is? If darkness is the absence of light, then surely love is the absence of something as well. Nothing. Love is the absence of nothing. So love is everything? Yeah. But then what's the yes. substance? 
What's the substance so, of everything? Because I say it, love is everything. The substance is love. But love is God, an like I would say, yeah, God, you know, these everything's God in a sense, is is the capacity of love to mm. be able to create something for others. But it's love and experience. You can you can um, you can uh, receive love, mm. and you can send love. So you, it's an experience then. Yeah, it's an emotional experience. But if there's all these different realms where all these different experiences are taking place, how can love be the only one? Well, because I guess it's just different forms. It, it, it so always, hate, it's always, form of love. it's always tainted with, um, with something. So hate would, hate is a form of love. Yeah, because the anger, in, often, that comes with hate. Comes from something. The of anger love. isn't a true emotion though, because mm. it's it, the anger comes from a. A resistance for well, the emotion. Anger is emotion. It's like anger is pain. It's all resistance. It's resistance of emotion that creates the anger. Anger is an emotion which gives you the physical drive and the psychological drive to identify what doesn't sit right with you in your life and take action to resolve that. I wouldn't see anger. I would see anger as throwing the rattle out of the pram. Well, that's when, that, that's when you handle or use your anger in the wrong or destructive ways. But you can be angry and achieve something good by utilising that anger in the correct way. I have kind of I kind of know what you mean. In a sense, I, this often bothered me, is when I went through the... I was in the army, and when I went through the war, mm. um, it was a kind of anger and hate that did it. Mm. And I've always been a bit sort of would I call that anger or, or would you call that sort of just your, it's a determinism, your isn't last it? hope sort of thing in a sense it's, it's almost like just like your last sort of fuck it but it gave you the energy and the drive to go do something it, about something yeah and then when I was through the war I was amazed at how much energy I then had and continued yeah. to use for the rest of the day I was like because emotion is an evolved, this come from because emotion is an evolved trait so every emotion that a person feels has its purpose and use. But now that we have rational thinking, we can attribute our emotions to some kind of rationale or some kind of thing which goes against rationale. That's why when we, when we say, oh, I felt sad, that wasn't good, I need to think differently, that's wrong. Or when you think, oh, I feel angry, I need to think differently, that's wrong as well. You're supposed to use your emotions to identify what's, how you're really affected by the world. Because it's based on instinct, right? And the desire to continue surviving. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't know about that. No, I don't know about that because I would say that you you can you can do all this without suffering. I would say that suffering equals error. But does it really though? Well, we're meant to have all these types of experiences. I think I'm saying you can you can do this without suffering, but most likely you're going to suffer at some stage because yeah, we don't we form. don't always get it right yeah. first time. But if you get suffering, I would say that's showing you that you've made some sort of wrong turn or error from the ideal. Well, you might not be suffering because of something you've done. You might be suffering because someone's come along and broken your leg, just for the sake of it. Well, like, I believe in law of attraction. So if that happened, it happened for a reason, and then it was a reason that... Yeah, that person It sorry. could, well, it could be two things. It could be something you've got to learn, mm -hmm. or it, it could be something that they've... Do you know what I mean? It could be on them. Mm -hmm. and, and you, you're kind of... It was your destiny to help them wins <laughs> but obviously you know let's look at, if we're doing that i want to look at only real examples from first-hand experiences because mm -hmm. that's what i've never done i've never sort of i've always wanted to deal with this subject from my own first-hand experiences like yeah. gandhi said in his i don't know if you read his book like my experiment with truth is it life or it's called life my experiment with truth or something but like, just, you know, to, to only deal with those things we truly know, 
to be true and that stuff we're experiencing firsthand. But if all your emotions are already predetermined by your emotional universe self, then how can you make a mistake with them here? Because surely those mistakes are already predetermined, right? Well, I think the only mistake to make is to, to, not, to not do them. To, to, to not accept them, to not accept them as your pre, you know, to not accept your path. Mm. I think, you know, there's a moment, you know, when you, if you're going to believe in God and, you know, there's a moment where you go, you don't know what's going to happen, but you're saying, basically, I'm going to try it your way. Yeah. I just still don't understand how you connect all these realities together in a physical sense. Because they all seem well, to be completely separate universes that somehow connect in some way. But like the ways in which you're saying they connect is by things that we can actually explain. Well, they're here doing. right now. Yeah. If I fell asleep right now... You'd still be here. I'm still here. Yeah. So that, that other realm is right here now. And if I go into a trance or, you know, I can semi-fall asleep and get a hint of it being there. But that's just dreaming, though. But we can we can explain dreams as existing in this universe because of but how the brain they are. I think they are only connected by the beings that are capable of experiencing them. That's, the dreams? That's, no, that you were asking how these realms connected. Yeah. So I think that's how they're connected. By someone who's able to experience the connection. By, yeah, a, a thing that is capable of travelling and seeing of being, all yeah. of us. And we all are. We're all capable of that. At least when we're born, we're capable. Are we really, though? When we're born, yeah. By what mechanic of nature? By the endocrine system. But explain that. That, that, that is the, the system of those organs that I mentioned before, testicles, ovaries, pancreas, yeah. adrenaline glands, yeah. Those, that's what they're able to do. They've been designed to do that. But this computer has been designed to receive and process information and show certain information based on that. Yeah. But that's not how it's been put together. You know what I mean? That's just well, I don't know how work. God made our souls. But we know that that computer's got motherboards in it. It's yeah. Got drive. Yeah. So we can. So we can see. That. We can see we've got the organs there. Yeah. But what we need to do is explain exactly how they're in communication or they're receivers of information from a different universe. Right, and you do that by, by because once you once you become still in your body, physically still, mm. you're not doing anything. This system then sort of kicks in you know it might take a few minutes for me I can do it quicker than that because I'm mm. used to it so the way to to analyze it is to do it okay but like and everybody can but I, I can walk up and down the path outside but your brain will stop you from doing it because yeah. your brain will keep telling you this is stupid not necessarily or it will say different things to stop you doing it but I think that would be massively unfair though right because, like, if everything is determined, and I don't have free will, and all that lot, then it's not my choice to accept something. If that's already predetermined no, by some higher have, power. You do have free will. But, like, I, I can go outside and I can walk up and down the path. Yeah. That's me walking up and down the path. I can, I can travel that. But that's not me saying what the path is, or how my movements upon that path are actually taking place, or what mechanics are allowing me to do that. What I'm trying to understand is these paths that connect these different realms... What is it that we're travelling up and down? Like the path made of concrete, Sorry. right? That's okay. I've, I've heard other people ask this question and they've been given answers like a silver cord, a golden cord. Yeah. But I've heard Because, like. But wait, right, can you explain drifting off to sleep? You do it every single night. Yeah, there were physical can you, things. No, but can you explain from your, not from the scientific from papers, experience. from your own first-hand experience when you of drift how it feels. off into sleep? Well, for me, when I experience drifting off into sleep, I'll be laid there, and then all of a sudden, well, not all of a sudden, but gradually I'll relax, and I'll unwind, and I'll start to shut down, 
and then I'll be in a different state where I'll be sleeping. And that moment, just in between, mm. there's a sort of a fuzziness, isn't there? You ever heard of hypnopompnic and hypnogenic? I don't know if I'm getting the words right, but they're states of like a hypnotized there, there, state. Those moments in between, yeah, yeah. If, if, when you're transitioning from yeah. wake to sleep, or yeah. when you're transitioning from sleep to wake, mm. you'll enter into a hypnopompnic or hypnogenic or whatever state of mind, which is where the mind is in like a hypnotized kind of state, where it's very susceptible, and you can have like, thank you, you can have like. Ah, so that's where like people can, can do real. the QHTT and stuff like that. I don't know what QHTT is. Quantum yeah, therapy. <laughs> no, but within, within, yeah. but yeah, they're talking to the higher self and shit when they get... When Not they, necessarily. Well, they think they are. Because they're in states of natural um, hallucination. There's no point doing this now, is there? Anyway. Yeah. Yeah, so, so, you know, explain that. You, you transition from one to the other. But we can explain that. Explain how that, way. explain how that is, uh, what, what are you travelling there? What road? <laughs> I'm not travelling any road, but my body and brain is going through processes, natural processes, where, like, my melatonin levels will rise, dopamine levels might rise, which are naturally kind of calming substances, and then my body um, will s no longer receive signals to move or mm. whatever, it it sleep paralysis, yeah. Yeah. yeah, but then my brain will go into a different um, um, level, like alpha to beta but you're, or whatever. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, like they can, you know, I've seen the things where they've monitored someone's brain throughout the night and they said, is it what, during rapid eye movement yeah. where the brain is most active? And that's where dreaming takes place. And then, and then there are periods where the brain is just, just a little bit active in the middle. That seems it's like there's alpha, hardly yeah. anything going on yet. Mm. But, or delta, whichever one. Yeah. Oh, my theory would say at that point... We've resonated out. You yeah you're fully in that spiritual world. And so then, where dreams take place in the REM. Yeah, but dreams take place all the time. It's just those are the bits that the scientists can see. Oh, look how active the brain is now. This is when you dream the most. Yeah, that's when there's most activity within the brain. But I would say that's just not when you're fully asleep. That's when you're still partially daydreaming. When you're in REM sleep, that's the moment where it's most hardest for you to wake. Right. Because okay. when when you're when you're in with the, your brain goes through cycles like half hour cycles. Yeah. But then like say minute one you'll be in REM sleep. Yeah. Minute fifteen you'll be in a lower state. Minute fifteen is where it's easier for you to wake up naturally. Right. So we're in a deeper state of sleep when we're dreaming. Well, it's not it's not necessarily deeper. It's just you're obviously very engaged. It's more locked in. You yeah, and maybe yeah. I was because I was thinking you know some dreams seems like this is a message like as a. Yeah definite message to me and then probably most dreams are where you're just sort of you know doing your, doing your, emotions. Doing your usual shit but yeah. those are the ones where you're more living in that spiritual world I'd those say. Those dreams take place within the same state of sleep though. But you talk about the deeper, the deeper sleep. I'm sleeps. talking about dreams or experience but you, you're saying that dreams that take place in a different universe whereas actually we're more locked in and there's more activity within the physical brain during those moments. Yeah, I think that's when you're getting a message that you need to, to know. So that well, I'd argue that's from, like, God giving you your message. But if there's all those processes that we can observe to be taking place during dreams, and we can explain the manifestation of dreams through those things that are taking place, how do we say that they're actually happening in a different universe? When we can explain it all based on... Well, I'm just to... saying that when you when when you've got those moments where the brain is least active, mm -hmm. that's when you're most active in the spiritual world. And remembering so the dreams that we don't remember are the most they're the ones. yeah they're the hardest ones to remember because you know when you wake up and try and remember your dream, you can only remember like you know ten seconds of it or something you know because of your REM sleep dreams. No, but I'm saying when you know when you when you're waking up naturally 
Um, you know, you can usually only remember the recent part of your dream. You can't remember all the way back. It's very hard to remember the beginning and ending of a dream. Yeah, I, dreams like puzzle me in a sense. Like you seem to, you, you you know, you're just suddenly somewhere, or you know, and then suddenly somewhere else. You know, yeah, but if dreams scenery are, can change. Like, but if dreams are messages that come from a different universe or whatever, <coughs> and we're supposed to learn from those. Why are we not remembering them? How can we not have the actual option or ability to learn from them? Because we can't remember those experiences. I wonder if sometimes they're like, like you say, why you know, why don't we remember our previous lives and stuff? Mm. Um, you know, maybe sometimes it would interfere with 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 the life that we're living. I mean, we're we're in a sense trained from young, mm. um, you know, and when we're young, because we often have quite a few nightmares, mm. we don't want to know about sleep, do we? Mm. we? We're glad when we wake up, oh, it's just a dream, mm. like, fucking hell, grateful. And um, so in a way, we're sort of trained away, we're trained to, to not to not go do too deep, in a sense, aren't we? Because we, we, we're brought up to work, in the physical world, you've got to work, earn your money, pay your rent, you know. Yeah, but no one really tells you to not pay attention to your dreams, though. Yeah, but they don't tell you to do it. You receive more information. They tell you not to, because they're saying as a kid, it's just a dream, don't worry, it's just a stupid little dream. Yeah. They're not, they're not taught to look into it and see what it's trying to tell them. But people only tell you to not pay attention to your dreams when you tell them, like, a nightmare or a yeah. or something. Yeah, they do yeah. it because they care. They want to set, we, you know, because use this as a parent doing it to a, a tiny little kid who's, yeah. do you know what I mean, you feel fucking sorry for it. When you... But you might experience going to the shop or whatever, and you might see something weird, and no one's ever going to say to you, oh, you just ignore that because it was a weird thing that happened, whereas it's still an experience, right? You still experience Because it. We're, we're so fully invested in this physical... Yeah. So what you experience, realm. what you experience, you can't really be talked out of not paying attention to. Because how many people actually do pay attention? No, to I think dreams? eventually dream, you know, if a dream wants to get to you, mm. people will get repeat dreams, won't they? So if they do ignore it the first time, they might get it again if it's that important. Yeah. Exactly but the fucking same. But we can explain all of that just based on the conditions of this universe. We don't need to have a whole other universe to explain Yeah, that. because most of us are invested in this physical universe. So most of our desire and will is to do well in this sh short lifespan that we have. And we most of the time, that's how it should be, isn't it? Yeah, especially if we're having past lives where we're supposed to learn from. But, like, we can explain all of that without having to have a different universe to explain it. So what I'm trying to understand from you is why, why, why does there have to be a different reality for, for, for things that we know to be how they are and how we can show them to be like, we don't need to have a God to explain our lives. We don't need to have an emotional... I need one to explain my life. Because otherwise I'd still be in the pit. Well, yeah. I wouldn't say God pulled me out. The idea of but God not God, you. God showed me a way out. But your idea of God doesn't necessarily require a God to exist in order for you to have that idea. I could call it something else. You can call it anything you want. But so. I see it as my... You see, I think, like, when you... When I connected with God thinking God is my mother and father, mm -hmm. you know, that is a special relationship. Yeah. And it, you know, it brings me way back, you know, to little, tiny, little baby. But do you think or do you not think that the idea of a God requires a God to actually exist, which I have that idea? Or do you think do you think that we can have an idea of a god without there actually necessarily being one? Uh, I don't think. We, well, as I say, you know, I don't think we'd be here if there wasn't one. So yeah, but that's based on your belief of God. Though. And then, you know, for me, if if this was my only life, if I was to then think, okay, I don't know what might happen to me when my physical body dies. That yeah. that could be the end of me. That causes 
anxiety for me. That's a fear of death. Yeah. That's not a desire to It's a fear to cease existing. So I have to have something which tells me I'm not going to cease to exist. Something that was there before my life and will be there afterwards. That is me. I have to have that, otherwise I would get anxious and I wouldn't be able to function. Yeah, but that still doesn't say that there has to actually be a God. Well, I God no, but to, to fit it into the, the big picture, yeah. then, because I could think, okay, I, I exist afterwards and I exist before, so what, I've always existed? And then, well, where am I on this path? You know, is it necessary? I had to, yeah, I had to have a, I had to have a beginning, yeah. when I where it came from like nothing. When you were born. And what does something need that nothing? It needs a parent. It needs something to bring it up. But why does your existence now require a pre-existence and also? Because I just said I couldn't space? cease to exist. That would cause me anxiety. But why does it require? Would be function. But why does your existence? Wait, but that's not. Based on anything which goes beyond yourself, though, your your anxiety of ceasing to exist doesn't actually go beyond yourself. No, it exists within you. Well, it might affect other people, but yeah. But why does your existence now? Well, yeah, it would affect other people, obviously, you know, friends and stuff like that, family. Yeah. But like, why does your existence now require a pre-existence and also a parallel existence in two other universes of spirit and emotion? <coughs> we can explain how you came to be in this reality, we can explain all of your experiences within this reality just by... Well, because there has to be something more to me than this physical reality. Why does there have to be? Because otherwise I would cease to exist at the end of this life. So that's what you're fearful of, is ceasing to exist? Fearful, I cannot accept it. Isn't it wise to try to accept the things that we can't change? Or are fearful of? Because the, the, the less we try to accept what we're fearful of, the more we're going to see but I, I, yeah, yeah, long. but I wanted to know, I suppose I could, I could have just lived not knowing, and okay, whatever I'll find, I maybe have some moments of anxiety, and then mm. get over it, <clears throat> but I wanted to know, and, and then when I found I had a, a way that I could tap into some knowledge, mm. basically it required me to go without cannabis for two weeks, mm. And then have a good old smoke, meditate, and I could get to a high enough level where I could feel what was true, and that's never let me down. Like the heart doesn't lie in in that deeper term of it. So, I, you know, I wanted to know. I found a way to get answers. I accepted the answers that came to me, mm. and I was happy with. I was also happy with the the understanding of it. If you can accept all the ideas that you've had, and it changed, and that meant I could live my life hap- happier. Yeah, yeah. But if you can accept all the ideas that you've had and your understandings that you've come to because of them, can you also accept the possibility that you might be wrong? Yeah, I'd say prove me wrong, and um, I'll you know I'll, I'll look at your way of. Looking at it, but you know what the burden. And if I liked, if I liked your theory more, and then you'd adopt it. I'd, I'd change, yeah. Because I've changed my mind about things before. But you know what the burden of proof is? Who? The burden the, of proof. The burden of proof. Yeah. If you want, when when you say something is true, it's not for others to disprove it. It's for you to prove it. Well, I I do that by, um, you know, there's only so much you can obviously prove, but I would do that by my state of being because like I say I'm also a believer in the law of attraction so that if I was wrong and I was spouting my truths around and being wrong about it yeah. that universe would act upon me to to show me that I was wrong and from what I've seen it's, it's showing me that I'm not wrong have you ever experienced something which makes you question your belief system? Well, I suppose, like, the tests, I would guess, you know, are sort of when you face some sort of hardship and 
and you, and you and you start wondering, you know, is this is this because I'm wrong or something? Mm. Um, I'm trying to say it again. Have you ever experienced something which shows you that your belief system might be wrong? And if so, how do you acknowledge or accept that, or choose not to accept it? Like, if you experience yeah. something or hear something which you disagree with, yeah. Do you think about how it could be right, or do you just dismiss it because it doesn't fit with what you think? Yeah, I think I think um, you know I might have avoided it. Yeah. So you go through confirmation. Depends how strong strong I'm feeling. So you know there would be times when you're feeling not so strong about it, and then I'd probably avoid avoid stuff that's you know like I see this when I was. Starting out with this, I remember having a couple of Facebook arguments about the existence of God and getting quite a lot of people, it's just stupid, like, it's pathetic, you know. And what I realised, you know, most people were just talking about the biblical God. Yeah, yeah. And then, you know, you get into that whole sort of thing. But it does seem to me like it's a lot more popular now yeah. to talk about God than it was 10, 15 years ago. Yeah, but I think that's just because of the um, advent and expansion of social media. You're hearing about it more because there's more people you have access to to hear about it from. But when you um, experience things that you disagree with, and sometimes you choose not to accept it, isn't that just confirmation bias? Have I offered you some of this? Yeah. Like, the things you want to be true, you want them to be yeah, true so course. much that you don't accept things yeah. which go against now it. Look, now look, because I said to you at the beginning where where I'd been. So when I was about uh, 25, no later than that, late 20s, I started to, you know Dan Brown? Dan Brown. That book. No, oh, Dan, Dan Brown. Brown yeah, everyone, yeah. yeah. So that book came out and everyone was raving about it and we were just thinking to ourselves, you know, gosh, all this stuff we've just believed, you know, we've all just been believing this lie or whatever. And I started to think at that point that it probably wasn't a God, that maybe all of our souls together yeah. was God. And I started to think like that. And and I probably did that for about six or seven years. Yeah. And um and I'd almost at one point talk to it, <laughs> you know, and got the idea that okay then I can do whatever I want. As long as I don't hurt anyone, sort of thing. Yeah. It felt like freer. But I would say that an empty feeling began to grow. Mm. I wasn't fully aware of. But it got to a point, and I was here, and it was summer, and I had like more spare time than than before because my ex had taken Francis to live in Woodford House, so I was mm. seeing him a bit less and a bit further away. And um. I got this wave of depression. It was like, um, it wasn't like a stroke, like where you feel all wobbly like that, because mm. you're so stressed. But it was, it was just this sort of, it was this really I don't belong here feeling, mm. right? It didn't really last for a few seconds, but it disturbed me. And it happened again, I think, I think a year later. It's quite a long gap. Mm. But a year later, it happened again, and it was like, you know, now this is the second time. I've got to do something about this. Yeah. I don't fucking like this, this feeling. And, um, and that was basically when I started to look back towards God and think, you know, was this, is there something about God? And I think I was quite near, I think I was about 2010. And I'd sort of, YouTube was coming about. I think I started to look at a bit of extreme weather on YouTube. And then 2011 started to make some videos and sort of talk about God. But I, you know, where my thought had been, I would sort of coming back towards the idea of there being a God. Yeah. And yeah, that was, that was the way back up. And then 2013 sort of really sort of getting into the idea of God and stuff and 
then seeing a sign and then I knew something good was coming and yeah. So it it really fucking for me, it really panned out. And I'm still on that journey, you know, it could still I suppose come to a cliff and drop off. But I think I've had enough fingers crossed I would build up a faith that, you know, we're all going well. I mean, the latest thing we get to see, but it looks like I shouldn't be getting evicted from here. Mm. I should be able to stay and know at the end of the month. But yeah, so, you know, but again, when I was facing eviction, I was kind of just trusting that whatever was going to come out of it yeah. was part of my path was meant meant to be. And I kept getting the feeling that I was supposed to fight and stay here any time I th thought about having to leave, you know, this feeling in there just dropping like fuck, I couldn't, I didn't like it and, and I thought no I'll fight, stay, I'll, I, you know, I'll cling on like and then I kind of got a good supportive feeling. Yeah. But I still don't understand and I don't think you know either how or why for everything that we experience here, we can explain through our experiences here. Why does there need to be a different reality? Do 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 you think you know? Different reality from what? There is only one reality. The spirit, the there spirit. is a reality, right? Okay. Well, different universes then, where we experience things simultaneously that all converge and have an impact on our experience here. We could call it all one universe, but that there's different different areas. But it's it different, like light, you talked about the light spectrum yeah. and all the light we can't see, yeah? Yeah. So think of this physical bit as just the, f the physical rays we can see, the spiritual is the x-rays and the emotional is the ultraviolet or whatever, and the gamma. But I still, I still can't understand for all of our, because like those gamma rays and all the light that exists here, right? <laughs> yeah. Do you believe that there is a difference... Because you were talking about facets of reality. Well, yeah. So there's different... Yes, when we're in the spiritual, that's different light, but it's still visible light, isn't it? So, yeah. No, it's not... The, it's not like the light spectrum. But it's it's kind of all one universe. It's one reality, but it's individual universes. Yeah, because it's reality, part of right? our reality, isn't it? So it is well, our it reality. Well, it has an effective link to When was the last reality, time you saying? felt an emotion? Because this is this is key. Without stuff. talking about f stuff you can feel, I yeah. could never prove to you any substance of what I'm saying. If you felt it, then you'd know. But you say you feel it. But does what you feel does what you feel always dictate the nature of your reality? Or does it just simply show to you how you've interpreted your reality? For me, the feelings is is the main things. If I've got a bad feeling, yeah, I I don't want to distract myself with other things so that I can put off dealing with this bad feeling. But why does that need there to be an entire different facet of reality where your emotions are, when you acknowledge that you feel your emotions here just inside your just brain? Just because when in making my theory it had to be separate it had to be it had to be key to this it's Maybe that it had, first then you, this when you first have your this idea. how we interpret if there's something new coming in the emotional realm yeah, yeah it will seep through into the physical but when we have an idea we can build upon the idea so when when you first thought of it it had to be separate and that could have been your intuition just kind of showing you there's a thing here, there's a thing there. But as you think about it more, you add to it. I think it was trying, I was trying to think where I am. Where am I? Yeah. Where's my true... If this body's going to be dead and ashes... So it's about your identity. And the spiritual body won't be needed for longer. Where, yeah, where's the true me? Like, where do... What, what is mine? What is truly mine? That's because I thought this body is just a lender. You know, it's mm. just a vessel. For, for, for that you can have for a while. But it's the mechanics of... So when I was well. thinking, when I was 
trying to think where am I or feel when I was feeling where I am. And when I had that moment where all I could feel was the air on my nostrils, that was all I was aware of. Yeah. I knew I was somewhere. I was where I am. Like, yeah, 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 where your body was. It was in this <laughs> no, not place. where my body is. Sorry. You were feeling the I'm air pointing. Your nostrils. Yeah, so but your that was all. Were where you were. But my nostrils, yeah, ju- yeah. But not my nostrils, just the edge of them, if you like, just where I could feel the air. So the edge of your nostrils is part of your emotional well, being as well. Well, because I realised that the. The air in your nostrils is the gift of life mm. that, from God. Okay. But you only have it half the time, isn't it, while you're breathing in? Yeah. And then the other time you're on your own in, in a bit. <laughs> right? Anyway, so, you you know, I need that to keep me alive, obviously, to experience. But I kind of did get a sense that I have a possession. Yeah. Right? And there's a there's a place for me. Mm. I, I, I'm, I'm on the tree. Yeah. You know? And... So as God has a galaxy, I have something, right? Mm. So that's 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 where that came from. So that needs to be. Perhaps it needed to be. It, Perhaps it needed to be all separate for you to be able to imagine it and 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 see it as a concept inside your mind at that point of inception. Yeah. But then, as you experience that inception a little bit more, you can see how things are linked together more, even things that seem. Um, counterintuitive or whatever, because that will, will, will still happen. But as you experience it, you make what's counterintuitive intuitive, right? I tell you, when I had a bit of doubt, yeah, when that when that idea of there's a plant within us, and then my doubt was thinking, oh, is that the bit of me that uh, is the spirit, is the soul, okay, right? So then I think, you it's know, like an actual plant. What were you thinking? Explain this plant. The, the, the endocrine system that I keep okay. saying about, yeah? The, the chakra organs. Yeah. So, you know, that will obviously die as well. Mm-hmm. So then, then the doubt in my mind, so I will cease to exist. But then you thought of a way to make your ceasing of existence not So then I happen. thought of it in terms of, no, it's obviously not that. It's, that's just what gives us the ability to connect with the soul. Everything you think seems to stem from your desire to not ceasing existence. Correct. Maybe. Don't you feel like that? Not particularly, no. <laughs> well, you're okay with ceasing to exist, are you? I'm okay with ceasing to exist with my belief systems and, and physical consequences as it is now. Because this is momentary. You understand you're momentary, right? You can carry on existing in a completely different form elsewhere. You know that you regenerate your so body. So you wouldn't cease to exist then? You'd continue somewhere I, else? I, as a conscious being, in this state, upon my demise and decomposition, will all the energy that creates me, all the energy that is my thoughts, my actual experience, that will continue to exist, but it will be reformed and restructured with other things. So will it still be you? Are you one of these, we're all one? What I personally believe is that everything that exists within reality is part of the same fundamental being. Mm. And that being to me is what God is, and we're all part of that. But that doesn't mean that me as a conscious being right now, when I die, will continue to be conscious in the same way. I won't, have, I won't even have all the information there which can form together to form my memories. So, did you not, so you, you didn't have a previous life then? I didn't have... Bef- directly before this life here... I don't believe that there's any chance that I would have had a conscious experience in this place here. But because of what I think conscious experience is, there could have been an identity which I stem from, which would have had a, a similar way of experiencing that I do now. But that would have been made from different materials, from different things, but it all stems from the same reality. So it's still conscious, but I can't put myself as I am now onto it to say that reflects me as a person. Or that what I am now will reflect anything else in the future. When someone dies, and I don't know if you've ever experienced seeing anyone die, mm. and I, but I did, I saw this in a cat, a cat, one of my cats died basically while we were having eye contact. Mm. And the light in his eyes went duller. Yeah. Like, it was quite quick, it was done, gone. Now, what's that? 
conscious processing of the brain. When you're looking at the eyes, yeah, like you've heard the expression, the eyes are the windows to the soul. All it is is the most direct link that you can see personally in someone else or some other being that goes directly to their brain and their way of processing. As soon as you stop processing, you stop reacting that to that information. Electrical energy. Yeah, yeah. What you're seeing is the light dying in someone's eyes. Is literally the lights no longer being processed behind them. So in your opinion, that whatever that was keeping that going... Was the conscious experience of that thing. Is the conscious experience of it. Yeah. So that got turned off. That was made and unable. That's that, and the conscious experience you're saying is everything. The processing is of information. Everything. What I think is my consciousness is the way in which my material brain is processing Is your it. conscience the same as my cat's conscience? It has the same mechanic behind it, but it's a different... Are you different? It's a different conscience. Like, that, that computer so there is are a entities. computer. You see this computer here? Mm -hmm. It's... You had a laptop somewhere. Yeah, I tucked it down there, I think. It's the same type of being, but it's not the same thing, right? It's a different computer, it's a different devices, but it's still computing yeah. in the same way. They're same. They're, one's yeah. an Ace. They're both Aces, actually, so they're the same brand. Like, this this has... Um, they're both XT architecture. I know nothing about X86 any of that. or whatever. This processes information which it receives. And it's processing information it receives based upon... But it's, it's not mechanical. alive. It doesn't care about We're anything. We're not talking about a living being right now. I'm using... Well, I was talking about when something dies. And here's what? the thing I'm going to explain yeah. to you. You see this, what well, you were asking if I'm the same conscious entity as your cat. Yeah. This computer here, it receives information and it processes information. Yeah. And the way in which it processes and what it receives is based upon its mechanical structure. Yeah. Yeah, the same as that other computer there. Yeah. <laughs> your cat had a different mechanical structure but it was still receiving information and processing information in ways determined by its mechanical structure. Right, right. The same is true right. of me. So your consciousness is your is the processing. But you of said you're different from. So you wrote so the consciousness bit. Let's say the light behind the eyes. It's the processing. Can we say the light behind the eyes? Yeah, I like that expression. Yeah, yeah. I use that expression. So is your is the light behind your eyes from the same entity? as the light behind my cat's eyes. So me and your cat are looking at the same object. Is it the same light is what you're asking? Yeah. My eyes have light cones in them that allow certain electromagnetic... Right, no, not that distinct. I mean, the, the, the source of it. Where me, is it coming your, from? If me and your cat look at the same object, that object is, is giving off the same information. Like, I, I can't look at an object and change what it is by looking at it. No. Neither can your cat. If me and your cat are both looking at the same thing, that object remains what it physically is, but I'm seeing what I've evolved to see, and your cat's seeing what it's evolved to see. Mm -hmm. Like, I can't see... Like, you see that light's pink. But what I mean is, where did... The, where did he go? Who, your cat? Yeah. It stopped processing information it received. So it died? Yeah. And, and that brain, conscious brain awareness... Died. Died. The conscious awareness... This is what I'm trying to. This is what I'm Ceasing trying to wonder. Cease to exist at that point. Cease to exist at the point the or information is no longer being processed. But who was the conscious awareness? The being itself. That experience is the experience. And where does that go afterwards? It's made of energy, right? Because it's received electromagnetic radiation from the universe around it. That energy is then dissipated into the universe. Yeah. Is it? Like the way in well, which it rots away and stuff, yeah. And the energy is dissipated. But the, the energy that I witnessed disappear... You didn't witness it go anywhere. You witnessed it cease to exist as it was. You never witnessed it where it went. It just felt like it went somewhere, I suppose. It went. But can you say to yourself now, so if you... Whatever had happened to my cat happened to you... And you're at that moment where it's about to get turned off. Yeah. And then, kaboom, you, you as you, just done. 
finished. But then your atoms and stuff start to break down and that starts to seep into the uh, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. And then something, because I said, have you got a previous life? And you sort of thought, well, maybe I, there was something of me I can't before. That. So because of my idea of what reality is, I have to accept that it's a possible chance. So until I can disprove it, I have to accept it's a possibility. But that doesn't mean it was. And what about if you did come across something that really made it likely that you'd had a previous life? You'd have to... Entertain the idea more. Yeah, you'd have to yeah. change quite a lot but in I'd your have theory. To, first of all, though, I'd have to realise whether or not that new idea I had was based upon something objective or the way in which I was likely to have processed that. Yeah. I might just be so you have, you have a quite strict rule in yourself then, what you accept to be Before true. I change my belief, yeah. I analyse whether or not that was me or because of the actual thing itself was profound enough in its own existence. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I have to question myself before I allow myself to change in a belief system. Mm. Yeah. Because in my belief system, <coughs> you got shot there in your previous life. Yeah, I know you're saying something about that. <laughs> but yeah. But. I, I don't accept that. I don't. I don't. I, because it. And when were you born? Uh, 88. So it probably wouldn't have been about when I was born that you were getting shot, Maybe. roughly. But mm -hmm. that's just a guess, really. Yeah. But I have a different idea of past life experiences. I don't think I physically lived them. I think it's information which has been passed down through genetics, which I'm a genetic being. And so that information... It's like, remember we were telling you about the instinct of some birds? Some birds? Imagine, like, you've got a nest of yeah. eggs. Yeah, you know that some birds are birds of prey, they prey on other birds. And other birds, as soon as they're born, they have the instinct to be afraid of that bird. That instinct wasn't magically sapped into it when it hatched, it was already pre programmed, pre -programmed into it, based upon well, the experience. It's quite sensible, really, yeah. Because it's based upon survival. Sure. Yeah. No, I mean, that, and that is a big thing. If you've got prey, you mm. need to know, you need to be scared of your prey. Well, we, we predator. If you're if you're a prey animal, yeah, and another animal's gonna. That's what I mean. I'm, yeah, did I say the wrong word? If you've got things that will hunt you, you need to be instinctively afraid of it. Yeah, yeah. It's like you might be instinctively afraid of heights. Snakes, no, yeah, water. Yeah. Mm. Someone in your lineage may have not died because they would have had to experience that thing, be fearful of it, believe it to be something which is a threat to life, and already had that belief instilled in them and then give birth to something mm. because like the experience will only go down into the lineage if it's birth afterwards you know what I mean yeah right should we what do you think should, is there some sort of conclusion well I, I still don't understand <laughs> oh, fuck all <laughs> like, I, no I don't understand why you think that why you think that what you believe has to be real in order to make sense of the world you observe and know to be true. Because I, because I think um, when you feel stuff, mm. that's what I wanted to make sense of. Your feelings? Yeah. But sometimes you have to make sense of your feelings by rationally thinking about them. Because the more you see your feelings as like abstract... Had, I did three or four years of serious meditation. Were you meditating upon the right thing? Can you say for sure you were? My, my form of meditating was just to sit and allow what happens. So your form and of so meditating... And so a lot of it was feelings and how feelings moved through my body. Which was just your natural state of processing in that moment. If you, if you try to meditate under different circumstances in a different environment... Well, if I, had distractions, if I had distractions, it just wouldn't work or something, you know. If yeah. other people were around, it would affect it. Because uh, I feel them. So you prescribe how you meditate, which means your way of meditating is always going to have the same outcome because you base it upon certain conditions. If you were to experience in a different setting in a different environment, well, I went on a no. Well, I definitely went on a journey. Yeah, within yourself. So you know, for example, I I would get burning feet a lot. Yeah. So it's in my YouTube videos as well. So it was quite a while while I was stuck with 
I had to keep stopping because my feet got so fucking burning hot, right? Yeah. So it wasn't until then I had a meditation where I actually made some progress because I hit upon the subject, which was either soulmate or mother God. But that, upon hitting on the subject, allowed me to let this burning heat come towards me where mm. the pain got less intense. And eventually I was able to process it. By that I mean it's passed through here and once it gets to here, this knows what to do with it, and I got a euphoric feeling afterwards. So each time I would tackle something, if I didn't get to that point, mm. then I'd know I hadn't managed it. What do you think is the likelihood? <coughs> so once you've done that, yeah. you can't say to yourself, that wasn't true. It's true that you experienced it. Yeah, but it might not be true one hundred percent the way in which you think it was experienced. It might not be a hundred percent. No, absolutely, I agree with that. Yeah. I do think a lot of the time, and I've said this, the path is zigzag. You never sort of follow in a hundred percent true line to whatever you're looking for. Yeah. You're often going off a bit like that, and then a bit like that, but all always heading in the same direction. In yeah. But you want to go to that direction. Yeah, but already. I don't think... I think it's purposely like that. You make it purposely like that. Maybe. But for me, that's what it was. And that's what I did. And still I see it's still the same in a sense. What do you think is the likelihood that you're wrong in all that you think about the grandest concept of reality? I think like 0.00001%. So it seems like you're very set. Mm. Do you have enough understanding of your beliefs to be as set as you are upon them? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I'm de like with people who are scientists and like deal with scientific machines and stuff. Mm. You know, I'm I'm dealing with me and my first hand experiences and how I feel every day. You know, I know that I've made improve. I mean, we do say people mature anyway as they get older. But there are things that I can do now happily that I just wouldn't have been able to do before. And and probably one of them is like temping work and mm -hmm. being a postman. The idea of doing a five, five days a week for the yeah. next few years, you know. But I'm... I'm five days a week is okay. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, how much, you know, considering how I have been working for the last 20 years, which is mm -hmm. a couple of hours a day, you know. Yeah but earning enough money, you know, I've had it pretty easy in a way. So anyway, but there's other things, you know, that, you know, I know that it was good for me what I did. Amazingly good for me. I I know it was, you know, I couldn't have thought of a better outcome when I was back before getting those depressive waves. Yeah. So, so, so far so good. And, um, you know, I'm not going to change my mind, in a sense, because it's working for me. And I'm happy, and me and God are... What if you could be cool. happier with a different idea? And that I don't idea believe it's possible. Positive. Yeah, I don't believe it's possible. So it doesn't matter what conversations you have or with who, we're never going to change anything you think? Very unlikely, unless because unless you can... See, to for, for you to affect me, mm. you'd have to be able to make me feel something. Do you mind not saying any words? What do you feel about the fact that you haven't been able to describe how your ideas fit together? I don't... I knew that was going to be an issue, and I said to you before, like, you are more intelligent than me. Well, that's, that's not... And I... That's not, not but you see, sin. so if we were to have an argument about something uneven, I'd say you could wipe the floor with me. Well, but not necessarily. But the thing is, my theory makes all of that a little bit obsolete makes the thinking kind of obsolete you've got to be able to feel yeah to to embark on this name one other person journey. on this planet who's going to feel your feelings in the way in which you feel them nobody so no one's going to be able to come to your conclusion but they'll feel their way. they but yes because if they find if they find the same path i took mm. it will work for them too because this, it, I, it, I believe this is the path 
What if they just ascribe to us? What if they try the same exercises and arrive to a different conclusion? Then I would say their their conclusion will just devolve. <laughs> well, because that, well, well that's one thing I've sort of, I've no but I've noticed this happening anyway. That I realised when I got some of these ideas that are big truths. Mm. I didn't feel the need to go and shout about it too much because I did realise that people will come to the same conclusions. People, the last time people are someone? probably coming from different angles, yeah. but I will see, you know, we're all heading towards more truth. But the truth is what you're choosing to say is what you believe and think. Right? Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Who else is going to think in your ways, arrive to the same type of thoughts by going through a different way? Uh, people are. It's happening. I see it. <coughs> On YouTube and stuff. I've heard you say that you've heard other people speak and you agree with their ideas. But when was the last time you spoke with someone and they agreed with your ideas? Not very often because, in a sense, to have a discussion with someone who's already agreeing with me would be pretty boring. Yeah, yeah. But there's plenty of people, yeah, like most people still don't, like most people I know, mm. still don't believe what I believe. But I do see it more generally, YouTube or whatever, a sort of a, a, a movement that seems to me to be moving towards the same truth that I believe in. Now there's one thing that isn't, and that is this, we're all one thing. Well, I think and I've done a video on that. I've done a video on that. We are all not one. <laughs> but I say straight away, you know, you're half right. Mm. Because, in a sense, that love, that fuel within, within our vessels, all of us, is one. And we are all, in a sense, going to eventually return into that one. So, you know, it's fucking close to being right. It's, it's even what God led me to. I, part of my thing with God led me to the to the source, the All One. What do you think led all these religious beliefs to their conclusions? Because they call that God. I often wonder where it started because I actually think you know man did invent God, mm. and it was probably the first, it might have been in the previous epoch with Atlantis. Maybe some men created themselves gods above others and that's where the idea of gods came from that the greeks adopted yeah and then but then we've got to this this place where someone said no there's one god and mm. this religion has then thrived i'd say and even had a messiah and i'm talking about the, you know the jews have said there's one god right mm. and then christianity you know it's and I would say that's us, through something that was made up, finding some truth. Yeah. Oh, there's not, you know, gods are true, but there's not loads of them, there's just, there's a god. And, yeah. When you, like, you say that, like, ideas evolve, and your ideas have, have evolved. When was the last time they evolved, your ideas? It's been a while. Um, the, the most recent thing has been the plant within. When would you say that was? Uh, when I first get that, probably 2019, I'm guessing. And before that, the last time? So, yeah, because I'd say the peak of it was, you know, 2014 was like the born again moment, and then mm. peak of ideas, you know, for a few years, and I had a setback. I like, started thinking about the devil and stuff, and what the devil's place was. I mean, I don't think the existence of God requires an existence of the devil. No, I think it, the devil works for God. That's where, that's the conclusion I came to. It's like... So the, you also do believe in the you devil? Yeah, playing the devil's advocate, right? God plays the devil's advocate to test us. So God is the devil? B before we, yeah, basically. Okay. Because I think, you know... Th there is a certain amount of responsibility with some of this knowledge. And, you know, there's certain things that you're not going to get until you're ready for them. God wouldn't want you to, to have them before you're ready because you could potentially damage yourself or somebody else. But you had it all before, right? So I think 
So we'll but I think before you're people, before you're ready for it, you get tested, and that's the devil's job, is which is God. Which is a part of God, yeah. So there is no actual devil. I don't think so. No. There's no entity that lives its existence as being the evil one. No. Do you think that in order for your beliefs to be real, they have to actually be real? You have to believe it. Yeah. No, no, no. Uh, like. Yeah, it's real. It's got to be. Re if it wasn't real, I wouldn't be interested. I'm only interested in what's real. How is it physically real? And when we say physically real, we're not talking about our feelings or ideas. We're talking about the physical world itself. How can it, for it to be real, it has to exist. And for it to have a causal link with the, this reality, there has to be... Because we are, we are the causal link. So if, I'm, if my soul is bright, yeah, yeah. it will em emanate around my physical body as well. Because my, these organs are in play, they, you know... But all these are concepts. None of them appear to be a theory or hypothesis. Until you or feel it, you won't. You, this is the thing, and you're never gonna. This, I think, God has done this on purpose. He's never done it. Feel He's things. never done it so that you could just say a few sentences, and then suddenly someone would get the truth. Well, n n that's not the. You point. won't know it until you feel it, and so that way everybody. Everybody has to do it for themselves. But like the, the, the but like you can't give it to somebody else. You can still think about your feelings and describe how you feel based upon what's taking place around you in the material world. Yeah, and you're always gonna. So when you feel the nature of reality, if you ponder upon that and think about it, you can still write it or say it in ways which I can show. I can try and describe it. Of how it's physically real. It's outside. You, it's of yourself. palpable. Well, no, it's not. It's. It's, it's, you feel it inside. But it has to exist outside of you in order for it to be true. But in the other realms. Which is outside of you, right? It's outside of your physical, but it's not outside of you, because you are in those realms. Or in these realms. They're here. And in what way does your conscious experience converge into this conscious experience? The me mechanically speaking. Well, the feelings are the dominant thing, so when they come in, everything else doesn't matter what's the feeling in the in the in the physical sense so it, it you know it's inside yeah it, it can it, it it can feel amazing and wonderful it can make you feel squashed and suppressed <coughs> the, the variations are huge on how a feeling can feel but a feeling and the more you reality. feel them the more sensitive you get to what's the, you know you, you can define it a lot more. So it seems like you have your idea of how things are connected, but you don't have your, you don't understand how they're connected or how they're actually linked. Because when we describe a feeling, we can't say it's a feeling and it's inside. Yeah, there are.